supraventricular arrhythmias, which is atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter. And atrial flutter, basically, you got the QRS with the two to one conduction. Okay. Two to one conduction. So there's two P waves with QRS complex. Okay. Two P waves, QRS complex. Two to one, two to one, two to one. That's atrial flutter. The heart is beating really, really, really fast. Okay. Now, what are the side effects of calcium channel blockers? Well, if it's the drug that's working on the heart because it's slowing down the SA node, the heart is going to beat really slowly. So side effects will be, well, that should be easy, bradycardia, bradycardia, because they're slowing down the SA node and the AV node. If the SA node and the AV node is slow, the entire heart is going to be slowed down. And what will happen, also because these guys work peripherally and they cause vasodilation, you develop hypotension, hypotension, low blood pressure, and patient can start becoming dizzy. The reason why it becomes the dizzy is because their heart is slow, they drop their blood pressure, and then they become dizzy because they don't get good perfusion to the brain. It can also cause constipation, right? constipation. You need calcium to be able to cause contraction of the muscle, uh, smooth muscles in the GI tract. If you use a calcium channel blocker, it blocks those calcium channels off. You don't have enough calcium for, consti uh, for contraction and you develop constipation. Constipation. Now, there's two other drugs that I just want to quickly mention because we've talked about class 1, class 2, class 3, and class 4. These are the two drugs doesn't really have a class. This is magnesium and adenosine. Magnesium and adenosine. So we call them miscellaneous. Okay. So magnesium, which is an iron, magnesium sulfate. Okay. So magnesium, actually, we don't really know the mechanism of action, but it's thought to stabilize the ca cardiac cell membrane. Stabilize cardiac cell membrane. Okay, and usually we use magnesium for patients that develop torsades de pointis. Okay, so patients that have torsades de pointis, torsades de pointis, or digoxin induced arrhythmia. So this is what torsades look like. See that? Polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. You use magnesium to kind of reverse this. And also if somebody develops digoxin-induced digoxin arrhythmias, you use that to, uh, to reverse this. But it does have side effects. The side effect of the medication is from toxicity, okay? So a patient can develop paralysis or respiratory paralysis which means they have difficulty breathing because their diaphragm is paralyzed and they can develop flushing and headache. That's one of the side effects of magnesium sulfate. Okay. And that's all you need to know for magnesium for the boards. You get torsades, the point is, this is a D, think magnesium. Torsades, the point is, magnesium sulfate. Torsades, the point is, magnesium sulfate. Repeat that after me. Torsades, the point is, we treat with magnesium sulfate. Okay? And it also can cause bradycardia. I'm sorry, I wrote paralysis. It's actually bradycardia. So let's talk about Denison. Adenosine is another class of drug, and the mechanism action is actually it activates acetylcholine 
sensitive potassium channels in the SA and the AV node. So, activate acetylcholine sensitive potassium channels on SA and the AV node. Okay? Now, what that does is it increases potassium conductance, which results in shortening of the action potential during hyperpolarization. So if you look at this stage four right here, adenosine actually works in this stage to kind of cause this hyperpolarization of the action potential. Well, what that does is basically decrease automaticity, decreases automaticity, and then it shortens the action potential. Well, this drug only is used to treat one and only thing in medicine. One thing only. That's it. Okay? So, here it comes. This is the only drug in medicine that you have to memorize for one single disease. It's used to treat SVT, supraventricular tachycardia. That's all you need to know about adenosine. It's used to treat paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, okay? That's it. For the boards, you see SVT, and the heart is beating really fast, okay? Like that. That is SVT. Notice that the QRS is narrowed. It's regular, right? And it's beating really fast. That is supraventricular tachycardia. Narrow complex regular tachycardia, that is SVT, you give the patient a denosin. Now this drug is not a very pleasant drug for the patient. When the patient gets a denosin, their heart actually stops and then restarts again. Because it blocks the ASA node and the AV node completely. And basically the heart actually stops and then restarts over. So the patient will have this sense of impending doom when they get this drug, and it feels like, oh my God, they're gonna die, but no, you're trying to save their life. So the patient is gonna develop chest pain because their heart is going to stop, okay? So they get a chest pain, they develop shortness of breath, and they have some flushing sensation in their bodies, and eventually they have a headache. So it's not a pleasant drug, but whenever a patient has SVT, that's the drug you push. You push it really, really fast. You usually give about six milligrams of adenosine in one shot. If that doesn't work, you give another 12 milligrams in one shot. And basically, it has a very short half-life. So when you push the drug, you know, this is just extra information for FYI purposes or for clinical medicine. You know, you push the drug really fast and you push like uh, 10 ml of uh, normal saline with it to flush the drug really fast because it dissociates really quick because it gets broken down by acetylcholine esterase. So you don't want it to be broken down before it gets to where it's going So you, because it has to go to the heart to work. So you want to push it straight down so it gets to the heart so you can stop it and then jump start the heart back again. So congratulations, you have completed antiarrhythmic lecture for your boards, but for the USMLE and the Comlex. Now, I want you to go back and review this lecture again, because for the first time you're hearing it, you're gonna need to revise it again and again and again. And the more you, re you repeat it, the more you understand it. That's why they say repetition is the mother of all learning. You repeat it over and over. This is a very easy topic, but it can be very complicated at the same time. But my job as, uh, you know, as your teacher is to make it very easy for you. 
because I'm proud of you. I know you can do this, and I'm very excited that this is just another step towards getting that dream score on your exam. Thank you very much for watching. This is Dr. Adishini again from ftplectures.com. Have a great day. Bye-bye.